we really just need an intro song so that like we can we can play it off and then like oh okay now i can get emotionally prepared for it yeah that's true i i I did look at some some music that we could 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 use that's like free music that's right chris commented on some of the ones we really liked we should just adopt them yeah yeah Yeah, i i I, I thought about it but then i'd have to like hit another button on my other monitor no No, you get one of the the big soundboard things so that uh you have that you have the you have the air horn you have all the the funny little sounds the wacky noises yeah yeah Sure. sure the the cartoon like skedaddling noise that they have yeah yeah well, I, I, not real. <laughs> i'm i'm convinced that our budget will totally allow for that oh yeah yeah well, there it's... are free versions and i'm pretty sure there's an app for that oh well yeah undoubtedly undoubtedly yeah hello uh, good here. morning good evening good afternoon <laughs> to everyone out there uh this is club moffat talks this is our november edition i am ryan I'm Chris. I'm Joe. And, and I... today we have a special guest with us. <laughs> Hello, I am Kim Gordon. Hi, Kim. Uh, Kim, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. I am actually a proprietor, owner of Intense Sleepover, which is a little tiny small business in town. Um, we do little uh, tent sleepover setups with air mattresses and uh, tray tables, stuff like that. Uh, But I'm also, I think I'm here more because I'm a local theater guru. I've been doing theater pretty much my whole life, and I guess that's why I'm here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What's what's your favorite performance that you've ever put on? Oh, my goodness. Um, Well, you have one. you got to choose one out of all the ones. One? No, 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 I'm just really hard. (laughs) I've done quite a bit as far as acting and directing, so it's it's a lot. Most recently, I guess this past summer, I did um, a a really cool show called Ten Nights in a Barroom. It was a melodrama, and so the audience got to boo and hiss and throw popcorn at the stage. (laughs) It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So here's something that I'm because what you've already talked about before i'm just kind of putting these things together have you seen these like escape room uh like live show things that that they're putting together in like bigger cities i think i have um but we don't have anything like that here so no and it's it's like it seems like it's a whole production. It has to be really expensive to put something like this together because, like, you have to do the costumes, you have to set up the script and do all this stuff, and like, you have to have a, a big area to do it. But I've heard of this one, like, in New York or something, that's like a modern take on Macbeth, I think. And like, you're solving puzzles and doing escape room stuff and watching the play, and like, nobody's watching the same side of it. Like, everyone's off doing different parts of of the the escape area whatever and they're seeing different parts of the story so they all have to kind of like piece it together whenever they're done the whole uh, interactive theater experience yeah and that that kind of thing is really cool but yeah you, it's saying that it kind of made me think of of that so interesting how things are turning out these days <laughs> yeah cool. Well, I guess we're going to follow the podcast schedule that Joseph has set for us, which means we need to first talk about uh, this week and what's happening on campus now and what we're doing. Okay. What do you want to start with? Well, we can can take just a a quick jaunt into what's going on around the area right now. Uh, Of course, uh, we're recording this on Election Day. By the time this posts, the election results will have happened, and, and the monkeys will have taken over, and, and we will sad all be people enslaved to our new masters. Gotcha. Yeah. No matter what the result is, <laughs> uh, but as far as uh, locally, uh, we do have more things coming up a little bit later in the month and going into December. Uh, but right now, just for ongoing stuff, just just really the things we typically mention, which are the uh, story time at the Wichita Falls Public Library which happens on Thursday mornings and Thursday evenings, also kind of, you know, uh, downtown, uh, Wichita Falls Brewing Company does their live trivia. 
And that's just kind of an ongo ongoing event. But we'll talk more about some specific uh, concerts and opportunities happening mostly on campus uh, at the end of the broadcast. Okay, I guess, uh, what are people reading, watching, playing, doing? Kim? Uh, go, yeah, no, go ahead. What are, are, what, what, what are you doing to entertain yourself when you're not theatering? Well, okay, as far as reading goes, sadly, I used to read all the time. I mean, I used to always have a book handy, but <laughs> lately... I've gotten into the home edits. I okay. have to show that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Um, which basically it's a big fancy book that, that helps me keep on track for organizing my house. That's what I've been mm. obsessed with lately. I've been trying to organize my house, organize my life, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, we could all probably use some of that every now and then. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's the extent of my reading lately. Um, anybody else have any good books? Maybe some recommendations? Because I do need to start reading some real books. Sadly, <laughs> the librarians are all going, when's the last time I actually read a book? Yeah, that's, um, that's oh, that the thing. <laughs> and, and here I am. I have a bachelor's in English, and I'm like, I haven't read. I haven't. Let's see. I, I finished reading the first Dune book before the movie came out. Um, no, I read Dune Messiah right afterward, but no, I haven't. I haven't really read a whole lot. I mostly just stick to reading manga and just playing video games. Uh, that's pretty much like when I have free time, that's what I do. Uh, actually, I've been. Um, I know she's not getting anything out of it, but I've been reading uh, Harry Potter to my uh, to my daughter before bed. So when she's eating her last, uh, there you go. Uh, when she's eating her her last bottle right before bed i pop open harry potter uh we're almost done with philosopher's stone we're like 50 pages from the end we're at the the um the unicorn bit um so <clears throat> there's that and then i read her like i let her choose between one of two books it's like good night moon and some book about a rabbit going to bed um and she's gotten to a point where she'll pick one like the one she wants to read or like i'll um as i'm reading it i'll lift up the page so she can like uh she doesn't have fine motor control she can like she can pinch or whatever um so whenever she sees me lift up the page she'll like flip it like that um and i'll have to hold it down for her but um she's not quite getting like real book page turning whenever i'm reading harry potter she'll like scratch the she'll scratch the paper she thinks it's just the, the funniest thing in the world but uh yeah i <laughs> that's all that's really all i'm doing i'm playing some video so games good night moon you think is the best uh, best selling read that people should read gotcha i no, i like good night moon it's it's uh <laughs> it's very calming it's very relaxing by the way they they do have a children's book called good night dune if you wanted to combine both of your stories together good night paul <laughs> good night uh good night baron yeah uh, except if they're doing that though it has to be the david lynch dune like it has to be good night baron leaping over the <laughs> the moon and it's him doing his like floaty thing where he's just floating around and sure. <clears throat> yeah. uh i i did the last thing i finished reading was that zombie apocalypse book mm -hmm. uh, uh until the end of the world I, I have the next witcher book sitting on my nightstand but i haven't started it yet <sighs> netflix i uh, i'm so disappointed i'm just so angry i it'll be okay the movie not or is the series not jiving with the books um it's not and it made henry cavill quit it's, yeah we've heard about the cast change which is disappointing i love henry cavill is yeah, yeah. Cavill? So I don't even know. That's that's the rumor mill, at least, is that they deviated so much that Henry was just like, nah, that's I'm done. And he just bounced. Because even last year he was like, as long as we're as long as we're adapting the books, I'm fine doing the whole doing the whole thing. But I eh, guess not. I, I think he's just gotten really busy with other projects because apparently he's going to be doing more Superman appearances. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And I I think he's still supposed to be doing a Highlander reboot. Oh. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So there can only be one. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess so there can only be one franchise that he's doing. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing is that he's 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 already involved in two successful ones. Uh or three, if you count Enola Holmes, um, which I would uh, honestly maybe his best acting. But uh, uh, the yeah, he's he's a busy guy. He, people how many, are wanting him to do stuff. How many Witcher books are you in at this point? I read well, and there it's weird because like the chronology on them is is funky. Because mm -hmm. I've read the two short story collections that I think were written later, but then got released as prequels. Uh, no, the first, the first one, um, the first one in the timeline is uh, is the first one written. So the the story about him going to to see the the golden dragon or whatever that's the first short story. Okay, and I have and I have read that one, but yeah. I'm on the I'm on the fourth book now. Oh wow! So. I um, play the video games. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I, I I can't really play video games very much because I have a a a really bad like vertigo thing that sets in with playing the video games in any of the ones that move quickly, which of course most of them do. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, unless it's almost as slow as Pong, I can't do it. Some people would argue The Witcher Three is that slow, but uh, yeah, that's that's my big like introduction to the series. Like I heard about The Witcher when it was uh when The Witcher Two was about to come out in like 2010. Yeah. I was like, I have no idea what any of these books are. I don't know what this franchise is, and I just fell in love with it. Like it's just it's just such an interesting world and such a such a great character, yeah. such a great cast. I been um teaching kiki's delivery service for my class for the last three weeks so i've been re uh revisiting a lot of the studio ghibli um films of that period uh the early years of uh miyazaki's uh stuff and the studio ghibli so uh only yesterday which again is a brilliant film um and again my neighbor totoro and things of that nature so what are we watching <sighs> Uh, I've been, I, I, I have a tendency to find shows after they're done, uh, because I just recently started watching the series Teen Wolf, um, <laughs> uh, which I've been enjoying more than I thought I was going to, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things is like, I put in my head as, as like, sort of the TV version of like uh, har Harlequin romances, you know, just sort of like mm -hmm. trash fiction. Uh, oh, trash and- uh, Great indulgence. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so I just, I never did. And so I, I had nothing to do. I was bored and I was like, I'm gonna watch the first episode of this. And I was like, I didn't hate that. That, was, that wasn't bad. And so I watched the next one and I think I'm toward the end of the first season now. Yeah. Uh, Giddy Tarakoski finished up the second season of Primal, mm -hmm. which I think is one of the best animated shows that's ever been done, personally. Is Warner going to continue that? Because I know they fired like half of their staff. Or, Who or knows what Warner is going to do? Um, it's not Warner anymore. It's Discovery, remember? Oh. Right. <laughs> of course. Is that the one where there's no talking at all and it's just first season there's no dialogue it's all just it's just it's just the characters moving around doing things i i think i saw like a couple episodes of that with my son and i was pretty impressed honestly it was it, it was very interesting he he did a little bit of that with samurai jack and so he wanted to do the entire first season is that the second season there is talking because they go to a different continent and there's actually people instead of just dinosaurs. Mm. But the first season, there's no talking the entire season. Mm. Everything's pantomime or you're supposed to infer things just by the the pure artwork. And it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. I think it won both the Peabody and the Emmys. So, yeah. I, I loved his uh, Clone Wars take. I, I thought that was a really fantastic little, like, 
vignette into Star Wars and stuff. Uh, it was much more of a of a of a um southern China Hong Kong wushu type type yeah. view of 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 the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Star Wars, anybody been keeping up with Andor? Yeah, we've been watching that. Yes. <laughs> I I uh <laughs> I'm intending to watch that one. I um there's a lot of stuff that I've kind of dropped recently. Uh but you liked Andor cuz it seems like that was I, I do. Um honestly, I feel like it started very slowly and I'm a I'm a geek whenever it comes to all sorts of things. I can't help it. I just I am. <laughs> and um but it started really slow, but my husband was like all into it so i'm like you know i'll kind of give it a chance and now that it's kind of progressing and we're getting close to the season finale um it's going a lot better it's getting a lot more interesting for me but according to my husband it's the most star wars show since <laughs> rogue one so <laughs> okay. i'm like okay all right <sighs> it's it's not bad but i mean i i will admit that i do enjoy like the mandalorian and stuff a little bit more yeah, I, I've heard it described as um, the best evil boardroom uh, conference show of all time. Um, yeah, it, it is pretty good in that way. Uh, the uh, the politics of it is is really good. Um, I'm surprised sometime by how relevant politically and culturally it seems to be. Uh, which is always nice in a work of fiction to have that place where you can actually relate to it, you know? Yeah. Well, I've, um, yeah, I've, I've kind of begrudgingly kept up with all the star Wars stuff recently. Like, uh, I watched the book of Boba Fett and I kind of hated it, but I, I watched it. I watched it all the way through. And then like when it just becomes the Mandalorian season 2.5, it's like, yay, characters I care about again. <laughs> Like yeah. I, I don't care about Boba Fett. I, I don't. I've never understood the love for that guy. He's just a cool armor. Uh, the love of the character uh, harkens back to the Star Wars holiday special when we were desperate for any type of of new info about the the upcoming Star Wars film, and we were told there's going to be a bounty hunter called Boba Fett, and there was speculation for years, and that's how Boba Fett became really popular. I mean. It's amazing that you can have a character who has the most undignified death in like the history of of motion pictures, um, and have his entire personality be defined by one line of Darth Vader saying "No disintegrations," and everyone thinks he's just the coolest guy ever. And now he has his own show, and he spends half of it in a healing tank. <laughs> um, but it's why, why don't you tell us how you really feel about that? <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, yeah, I like the Mandalorian. Season two got kind of uh, irritating with all the like all the callbacks and all the like bringing in all the other stuff from like all the extended universe stuff. But um, yeah, I, I want to watch Andor. Um, I dropped She Hulk. I, I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm good with Marvel. I think I'm okay now. Okay. I got it all out of my system earlier this year, and I'm like done thanos was the end of the franchise <laughs> I, don't need, I, don't, I don't need any more i'm good with it so you didn't like she hulk or you just dropped it like mid-season or something i just i just kind of got bored i don't know i just like eh, i don't know like that and like miss marvel didn't do it for me the the captain america show was kind of dull um just at, at a certain point i was just like yeah I'm, I'm i think i'm okay i think i'm good i, I don't want to see any more of this universe i'm kind of i'm kind of over it but um i dropped the lord of the Rings show like uh halfway into the second episode i still haven't gone back to that um i did really really love uh the new game of thrones spinoff thing i thought it was um uh, you know what i'm, I'm gonna good. i'm going to make my opinion known the first season of house of the dragon was fantastic um it's i'm so happy to to be excited about that world again because like essos is such a cool setting and it was so let down by by just the way game of thrones ended and just being back in that world and like the first season of this already gets into the weird like 
Innsmouth cult, like fish people stuff, and like all the uh, the crazy weird Lord of the Rings or not not that the the Game of Thrones setting that that you really don't see in the main series. Like it just and the the politics and the a king that's actually competent and really cool. Like just everything about it. Like every I, I was I was hooked on that show. I'm so so happy that it's back. Yeah, I. I've been digging it too. I mean, it's been pretty good, uh, with the exception of the incestuousness. But you know, that's Game, of Thrones. that's Game of Thrones, though. It's the Targaryens. We all we all know it was gonna happen. You don't keep but, that silver hair for hundreds of years without some and the, and the, and the purple eyes in the books too. Like you got to keep those purple eyes going. Did you read the the book this is based on, Fire and Blood? I did not. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I it's a it's a history book. I, I plan on picking it up at some point, but I kind of just like skim the wiki. I'm like, all right, just tell me like if I'm already going to be reading the the history of it, you might as well get it to me in Cliff Notes. But um, um, another show that my husband and I just started watching, and um, that I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's an FX show called Little Demon. It's very interesting. It's uh, produced by Danny DeVito. And I animated, enough, right? Huh? Animated show? Animated, yes. Yeah, yeah right. I've, I've his seen that. Daughter, he plays Satan. Danny DeVito plays Satan, and his daughter plays the Antichrist, which is his right. daughter. So um I started watching it honestly because I read some controversy about it, and then I just happened to flip and I was like, oh, I'm kind of curious. And I mean, there was people freaking out, oh my gosh, they're promoting satanism <laughs> you know freak it out so it's like you know what what the heck so we started watching it and it's very adult i mean definitely more along like the adult swim time so i don't really know why people are freaking out since it's definitely adult it's not meant for kids at all um it was oddly disturbing but awesome <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> well, I'll check that out then. It's so gory and <laughs> raunchy, um, but it's hilarious coming from a cartoon aspect. Um, but like the the devil in it, he's got a lot of layers, like an ogre and an onion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's it's a fun watch. I highly recommend it. It's interesting about how that type of genre seems to be expanding because I would say that the Harley Quinn uh, um, uh, cartoon probably also falls into that category of raunchy and, and grotesque. I think uh, you know what I'm. I'm gonna. I, I was mentioning this with my wife a few weeks ago, but I think it's just something about how like anime has gotten so big over here, and there's not like a for children. I mean, there is, but like it's not like there's a chunk that's for children and there's a chunk that's for adults it's like kind of mixed like everything that that's like really big or that's really popular kind of has like elements that are kind of lighthearted, but also not so much that that they appear like childlike and i think that that's having a big effect on like entertainment now because like especially with like comics and stuff you'll hear right now um, I've noticed a meme like on Twitter or something that um, comes around every few years where it's like, where where do I start on reading Spider-Man? And the, the response is like, here's like, you could start on issue 600 something and then read like spectacular Spider-Man here and there and then go back to amazing and whatever. And then for the other ones, like, where do I start reading Demon Slayer from volume one, chapter one, you pick up the first one and then read it till it's over. And I think that that attitude really is, has changed like animation and Western comics and like just the approach to that stuff. And it's nice to see that that kind of thing is like, it, like places like FX are, are really embracing that. And th that's really cool to see. By the way, watch Chainsaw Man, everyone. That's my PSA for the week. <clears throat> well, this has been Geek Talk. Um... <laughs> Geek Corner with Kim and the Librarians. <laughs> uh we've alienated half of our audience by now but let's try to maybe pull pull it back in um yeah we're supposed to be talking about local theater 
So let's do that. Okay. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, Kim, I know that you've been involved with uh, community theater basically your whole life. Do you remember what your entry point was like when when you first? Uh... Yes, actually. Um, so. I was born in like Arlington, Texas, and we moved up here whenever I was five years old. And uh, so it's been a while. I moved off a couple times, but it's which stuff also is the black hole. It sucks you back. <laughs> <laughs> Every small town in Texas is that. For real. Uh, yeah. But anyway, my family got involved with Children's Theater of Texas mm. way, way back in the day. And um, my brothers were uh, very much involved. And at five years old, I was still a little bit young. Well, then <laughs> um, Children's Theater, Theater of Texas put on a show called Miracle on 34th Street. I was six years old. <laughs> six years old. I was so old. Um, and they put it on at the Wichita Theater. It was before the current proprietors. Um, and so, yeah, my very first show, I was six years old, Miracle on 34th Street at the Wichita Theater. Um, the Wichita Theater at the time looked a little bit different. They didn't have the Performing Arts Center that was right next door to it. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, a little traumatized by the by, uh, the stairs on the outside. <laughs> there's between the two buildings that's cover up, covered mm -hmm. up now, there's um, a staircase that's over a hundred years old and whenever we weren't on stage we had to go through the alley between the theaters or between the two buildings and I had to climb this hundred year old alley to hang out in the balcony <laughs> between <laughs> like while the show was going on between scenes and I was pretty traumatized by that because I'm pretty sure I'm I, it was very rickety and it was gonna drop at any moment but surprisingly it's actually still there between the theaters you just can't mm. see it because it's kind of covered up but yeah uh, shortly thereafter I started doing shows at backdoor theater and I never really left um I've done oh gosh probably 60 70 shows in my life I mean quite a bit um I I perform, I direct, I work backstage, I do a little bit of everything. Does the pre-show jitteriness ever go away? No, and it shouldn't, honestly, mm. <laughs> because um, most actors they that nervousness they turn into positive energy to use on stage, so. I, I was told a long time ago that the moment that you stop being nervous to get on stage is the moment you probably shouldn't be on stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a little too complacent, too comfortable, because then you're not, you don't perform as well, I don't think. Yeah, and that, that energy, I, I have to imagine, is more that you, you want to put out a good performance than just, just the fact that you're nervous about getting in front of people. It's that you get in front of people and you want them to be entertained and you want them to be in the in the same story in the same narrative as you are and I, I just assume some of that nerve is like what if i don't give them the performance they want well right it's i mean you're there obviously to entertain and you don't want to disappoint the audience because i mean <laughs> for the community theater level actors get paid in applause <laughs> so, yeah that's that's what you want but we're also you know low-key adrenaline junkies because you mm. get out there <laughs> and it's all sorts of adrenaline and it's a lot of fun though that sounds like a lot of fun actually uh anything that's uh well, I mean, I obviously everything that you're doing is is jumping out at you is is something excited. But what's a what's a really big performance that you've got planned in the works? If okay. you if you don't mind me asking. No, you're fine. Right now, I don't have anything in the works at the moment. Surprisingly, um, I. Well, thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> no, um, I'm taking a break at the moment. Um, 
my family's had some health issues, so I'm kind of taking a, some time, but I'm I'm still involved and still definitely kind of in the know. Um, there's a lot of great, great shows coming up. Um, uh, I kind of wish that this podcast would have been like a week ago because yeah. I could have told everybody about all these opportunities for auditions because there's a lot that, um, especially at the Wichita Theater, they've just auditioned for, I feel like, 50 different shows. Okay, that's an extreme exaggeration. <laughs> but... Um, they have auditioned for all sorts of stuff like Footloose and Barefoot in the Park, mm -hmm. uh, all just a bunch of different things. Um, but I definitely think that people should come out and like start to really think about getting involved and on stage and off stage, come out to auditions right now. There's no future auditions posted because we just, Wichita Theater just had a whole bunch of auditions. Um, but coming up, there's all sorts of stuff. Both uh, theaters have issued their full season of shows. And there are some exciting things on the seasons coming up. Um, I have it pulled up on my computer here. Like Wichita Theater, they're starting the year out um, with... Little Mermaid and Footloose, which is pretty cool. I think they've already auditioned for both of those shows, but they have um, in the works also, I think the next thing that they will audition, I'm guessing in like January, don't quote me on that, uh, but somewhere around there, I'm guessing they're going to do like SpongeBob the Musical. Um, they're bringing back Wizard of Oz again, Little Women, A Christmas Carol. Um, they have a huge... Uh, Season selected for stage two as well. Barefoot in the Park, Into the Woods, which I'm super excited about. Um, the last time we did it at Wichita Theater, I played Jack's mom, and it was oh. fun. Uh, uh, Greater Tuna, um, which is a two-man show. That's a, it's a great show. Yeah. splitting show. It's hilarious. Um, Nonsense 2 and Agatha Christie's Murder on the Nile. And that's mm -hmm. just for Wichita Theater and Stage 2, which is basically the same thing. I mean, it's the same owners, except one's right across the street from the other. Um, Backdoor Theater, they have a smaller scaled down season planned for this year, um, but it still looks very exciting. There's still Backdoor Theater, um, who... I absolutely love and adore. They've had a lot of hardships um, uh, since COVID. A lot, a lot of hardships. They had a really serious flood. And they're still trying to get their um, dinner stage back in order. Uh, they, yeah, as I said, they had an awful flood that completely decimated the dinner stage. And they're finally, finally starting to get that back. But they've had to scale down quite a bit because they don't, have that available i mean it's so much easier to add more shows whenever you have two stages um but supposedly they're they're coming close to an end uh, but they're gonna start their year with xanadu which is awesome uh some cheesy roller skating gotta love it um mad libs live which is a musical um it's supposed to change every night which is mm. kind of interesting uh i have a feeling they're gonna pull on a lot of their um improv people yeah which is is gonna be a lot of fun um the lightning thief per, the percy jackson musical which i'm super super excited about might have to come back out for that one. Uh, <laughs> Good timing for that too, because they're they're reviving the the film franchise. I think. Yes, I think that's going to be a great great seller. Um, I just worry that which, that backdoor theaters auditorium isn't big enough to hold everybody. <laughs> so make sure when that comes out, get your tickets early so you can go see it. Mm. Um, they're also after that they're doing Sherwood: The Adventures of Robin Hood. It's a Kim Loop. Ludwig's play um Ken Ludwig I'm I'll be honest I haven't read this particular show but uh he is known for his extreme comedy his extreme farce so I am 
guessing, and this is just a guess, maybe this is a rule breaker show, but I'm guessing that this is most likely going to be a hilarious comedy. So it's, it's going to be one that's going to be fun to watch. Um, they're also bringing in Puffs, which I don't know if anybody has ever heard of that, but it is awesome. It is a, a spoof of Harry Potter. And um, I watched it a few years ago on Broadway HD, a streaming service that I have. And it is so gosh darn funny. It really is. It's absolutely hilarious. And um, that's one, if you're a Harry Potter fan at all, you're going to want to see Puffs. You might even want to audition for it. Um, it's one that's kind of like Mad Libs, that it can change a little bit every night. There's a little bit of improv. Um, but it, it spoofs pretty much all the Harry Potter characters. Um, and uh, uh, as you might guess, Puffs is based on Hufflepuff. And, uh, <laughs> and, and there's just... A, the the whole thing is is the Hufflepuffs living in, you know, Harry Potter and Gryffindor's shadow, and <laughs> their whole philosophy is. <laughs> that I would like to see is a series like that where it's like the Ravenclaws and the Hufflepuffs and everyone else are just kind of there, and all the crazy like Voldemort stuff is happening like okay. elsewhere so it's like waiting for godot but harry potter that's that sounds like that yeah. would be really a yeah. really interesting premise yeah puffs actually kind of goes through the whole series of harry potter in one short hilarious play <laughs> like i mean it goes through the whole cedric death and it's their idol because cedric was the most famous puff and oh they're crushed and but it's it's a really really fun fun show i out of all of the shows coming in both shows of the seasons that's the one that i'm really looking forward to the most um and i think backdoor is gonna round out their season with scrooge in rouge which i am also not familiar with and um i have to say i love that backdoor is pulling in shows that are new and fresh because that's a that's a big deal a lot of people they get tired of seeing the same show over and over and over again and although i mean some of those sh same shows that they put on over and over um tend to make money it's it's good to see some fresh shows so i'm i'm really looking forward to both of the seasons uh but especially some of those sh new shows that people haven't seen yet and i mean both theaters have new shows that are coming out but um backdoor does tend to have uh, newer shows and more fresh shows than wichita tends to do um a huge difference between the the two theaters is Wichita tends to do more family shows and musicals, whereas Backdoor Theater, um, they do have some family shows, but mostly it's not. Mostly it's for adults. It's it's for the date nights. I mean, go with your significant other and enjoy yourself. Whereas if you want to bring the kids, take those to back to Wichita Theater. So it's a uh, yeah, they're they're a, they're very different. Now, Wichita Theater Stage Two, they do put on a little bit older um, shows, but they still won't put any show on that you can't really bring the family to. Uh, but mm -hmm. I will say that, like for Stage Two, I mean, not that they have like parental guidances, but it's more of like a PG thirteen kind of of theater. Uh, whereas the Wichita Theater is like G <laughs> or PG, <laughs> um, whereas Backdoor Theater tends to put on more mature, <laughs> more PG-13 to R rated stuff. Yeah, well, it's good that there are, that there are locations that actually do tend to focus more on the different types of demographics that they that they're used to that's that's better than just like kind of having a wild card or something 
exactly exactly because i mean it, it helps families especially because um like i i have kids and i want to get i want to make sure that my kids are involved in theater and well with me as a mom, they really don't have a choice if we're being honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that I can, even if I hadn't heard of a show before, I can get tickets at Wichita Theater and it's always going to be fine for my kids to go to. Always. Whereas if I want to go just on a date night with my husband or just go with, with the ladies or whatever um, and have more adult mature content then I'm probably going to go to backdoor theater instead. So it does, it, it helps as far as that's concerned. That's cool. Uh, do you have any advice for like aspiring theater people, be it uh, anyone who wants to work behind the scenes, anyone who's interested in being an actor? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So first of all, whenever there are auditions, just go just try and if you don't get cast that first time do it again I mean and I know that's so much easier said than done because there are so many people that come out and they'll audition once and they won't get a part and they're like oh no I'm done I'm not good enough I'm I I don't want to do this anymore that's heartbreaking and I mean to be honest, actors do have to have a, a strong constitution and be okay with rejection because you have to get out there and you have to try again because not every show has a part for every single person. It's just, that's just how it is. And just because you weren't right for one particular show doesn't mean you're not going to be right for other shows. So my biggest advice is just get out there, put yourself out there and try. And if you don't get a part, um, make sure you put, or whatever you would do with the uh, audition for, make sure you put on there that you're willing to work backstage, that you're willing to do whatever it takes and volunteer whatever way. So just get your foot in the door. Cause sometimes the theaters really look for that. That's really what they're looking for. Um, so say somebody goes to audition for a show and maybe they're not the best singer, but the best actor or whatever, maybe they were just kind of okay, but they didn't get cast, but they're always up there volunteering for whatever. Maybe they're helping build a set. Maybe they're helping with concession stand or ushering or whatever that still gets your face out there and it gets them to know you. And the more they know you, the more they're going to be likely to cast you in shows, honestly. So, I mean, as I said, that's just, that's my biggest, biggest bit of advice to put yourself on the line. Don't be afraid of rejection. Don't take rejection personally as well, because the casting committee, they're not there to make friends. They're there to cast a show and again not everybody is right for every role I mean I have auditioned for tons and tons of shows and didn't get a part but I still get out there and um I mean you just you never know what show is going to be right for you and what they might see you as and another thing like say you're auditioning for a show and you have your mindset on one particular role get that out of your mind <laughs> because whenever you go on audition I mean you can always put on your audition form hey I'm interested in Miss Hannigan and, and Annie and you could audition for it but maybe maybe they don't see you as a Hannigan maybe they see you as a Grace or an Annie maybe you're 11 years old and can play Annie who knows <laughs> <laughs> um but don't like wall yourself in, be open to those other roles because there's, I've sat in plenty of casting committees where somebody will say, oh, no, I want this role. But we're like, you know what? You would be so much better in this other role. And there's been times that they're like, no, I don't want that other role. I only want that one. So deuces, <laughs> but don't do that. I mean, just kind of, just be open to those things to those experiences because it's a lot of fun um once you get in there and 
when you start rehearsing, being a part of a theater family, a theater cast, it really, it, it becomes a family and there's no other experience like it. It really is. I mean, they are theater people are probably some of the most accepting people on the planet of anyone and everyone. Um, it doesn't matter political affiliation, sexual orientation, none of that matters to theater people. They just, they want you to belong and they want you to feel welcome. So if you're looking for that kind of, of camaraderie, definitely, definitely uh, consider auditioning for a show and doing some local theater. We've got amazing, amazing theater opportunities here in Wichita Falls. Um, Wichita Falls is very, very rare in the fact that we have more than one community theater in town. We actually have three, technically. We have three stages. I mean, two of them are owned by the same, well, I, I, I guess if you want to be technical, we have four stages <laughs> once the Backdoor Theater dinner stage is completed. Um, but there's so much opportunity in this town and it's very rare. I honestly don't know if there's anywhere else in the country, especially with our population density that have nearly as much theater opportunities as we do here. We're, we are very, very blessed in that department. Yeah, I have a quick question for you. Um, well, besides almost dying in an alleyway on a, and a rickety bunch of stairs, do you have a, a, a memory that sticks with you um, from the theater? A uh, cherished memory of any sort? I have all sorts. Uh, there was <laughs> there was one time I was doing Summer Youth Musical at Backdoor Theater. This was probably my first big oops on stage <laughs> that, that we all, any actor remembers their big oopses and well, at my age, I've had quite a few, but my first big one, uh, we were doing Oliver for Summer Youth Musical, and I was just a chorus member, and uh, we were doing Um Pa Pa, which was the big, uh, like, bar number, and um, I had a mug, and Um Pa Pa, well, I go, and I sit on this guy's lap that is sitting downstage right and he's sitting on this bench I go and I I sit on his lap like I'm supposed to in the song just kind of carefree well the bench breaks <laughs> while whenever I sat on it and he literally had nowhere to put me he couldn't hold me so he just takes me and he throws me over his head and I am literally caught by somebody in the audience on the front row. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm just thrown and <laughs> the audience member, they got a, a, a surprise that they were <laughs> not expecting. Um, but you know what? I, I got back up and I grabbed my beer mug, acted like it was all part of the show and just kept going. <laughs> wow. What a performance. You, can you believe they do that every, every other night? Every <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so where can people go to get information about, uh, auditions or your show times or just, just about anything they might want to know about any of the uh, local theaters around here? Um, both theaters have a website. Uh, Wichita Theater is uh, wichitatheater.com and Backdoor is backdoortheater.org. Do not look up backdoortheater.com because you will be in for an unpleasant, well, maybe pleasant for you. I don't know what your cases are. <laughs> but Let me look that up at work real don't, quick. So don't I can look up backdoortheater.com because it's like <clears throat> not theater that you are looking for these are not the theaters you are looking for um, <laughs> um but both theaters are also very heavily represented on facebook i totally suggest um getting on there following the theaters pages um check them regularly as well check the the facebook's and the websites regularly because they update those auditions all the time and 
sometimes they don't give a whole lot of notice for auditions. I mean, usually they're pretty good about giving a few weeks, but there has been in the past some occasions where you might only have like a week or so before an audition. And if you're not on top of it, and if you're not looking, you'll miss it. So just make sure you, you like and follow their pages and so that you see all those updates that they do. Um, to bring this back to the library for a second, uh, some of our students out there might go, but how I know I'm going to like it. I will point out that our students and our staff members and our faculty do have access to one of our databases, which is Digital Theater Online. And Digital Theater has hundreds of live productions. So if you want to see Into the Woods, you actually have it, can stream it to your computer for free. If you want to see um, Barefoot in the Park, it, again, I've been checking it. We actually have Barefoot in the Park, a uh, production of it. It has it has <clears throat> Broadway. It has the Royal Shakespeare Company. It has uh, the LA Theater. It has so many different uh, theaters throughout the, the United States, Europe, and the world in this database. And you guys have access to all of them. If Again, if you are a current student here, you can spend your entire time doing nothing but watching great live theater uh, on it to see uh, will I like, because again, I, I know a lot of the students are going, oh, how do I know I'm going to like that? I don't know if I'm going to like that that particular production or how do I know I'm going to like that story? If you want to check it out, you can check it out. We have lots of different things online for you to look at. And anything that gets people interested into theater, I think is worth it. So, and again, you guys are paying for it. It's a streaming service that's not re really used that much. And I think a lot of people out there aren't aware of it. And again, it's digital theater. It's in the library databases literally hundreds of um, live productions that have been filmed. That's awesome. I kind of wish I could get in on some of that. I'm just saying. Well, um, <laughs> take a lifelong learning class. You'll have access to it. As a as a disclaimer, we're not saying watch that instead of the productions no, I'm, that no. our theaters are putting on. The thing with, with theater, though, if you, if you really are asking why why should I watch this, why should I go and sit down and and take the time because because some shows especially some some of the bigger ones can last for quite a bit yeah. i've i've heard of shows that go on for multiple days even depending on i don't know if our theaters do that but depending on how big it is you, you might need three four days for one performance to uh, to go through and when when we say maybe check out one of the recorded performances that's like those are edited together they have different shots for different cameras and stuff the actual live event of going in and watching a performance and seeing different interpretations from different actors of, of whatever character that that they're portraying like that's really what you want to do whenever you're going to a live show at at any kind of theater you're going there so you can see a very unique take on something that's that's been written before that's been performed before uh, and I mean, I, I've seen some instances where they, where where a theater will change a setting, they'll change uh, genders for a character. It just really depends on who's running it, who's going to be in the show. Like but you're going just... there for the performance. Yeah. One of the most brilliant live performances I ever watched was back in the '90s when SMU was doing Hamlet on Monday. Wednesday and Friday, and doing Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead on Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, and Saturday. Same cast. That's, that's fantastic. Nice. <laughs> I mean, there's also the that really old Family Guy episode where they do um, the 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 King and I. Is that what it was? I, I don't remember, but um, uh, it it becomes like a like a mecha battle. Uh, show of, of some sort and uh, yeah it's that's an extreme example and it's obviously a stupid one but it's that same kind of concept where it, it really just depends on who's running the show also if you're really lucky an actress will land in your lap so you know they, yeah. you get that going for you right exactly i mean <laughs> maybe not every performance but you know there's always <laughs> but it can happen you just never know yeah. <laughs> stranger things literally have happened yeah. sad but true <laughs> Well, as as much as we would uh, love to continue talking, and we could, I, I literally, I've said this in every every uh, 
podcast for the last like six months or something, but we, we could continue talking for hours and hours, but we don't want to keep you. It's been an hour already and we've had a great time, but uh, I think this is about the point where we probably need to start uh, wrapping up. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to plug or, or mention? Um, I guess that's about it. Other than my business, which I very... <laughs> minorly <laughs> uh, touched on I own Intense Sleepovers which is a uh, party planning service where we come to people's houses we set up really cool uh, tent sleepover setups that are themed have air mattresses each person has their own little personal tent um, we gear towards uh, kids and adults, we have uh, themes for pretty much everybody. Check us out at IntenseSleepovers.com. It's pretty cool. We come check out our setups and stuff. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I, I see your I see your uh, things on Facebook for that, and they always look really cool. Really cool setups. Yeah. Uh, you just did a like a Bohemian one, but I thought yeah, like a boho chic yeah. kind of thing. It was for a 10 year old little girl and she loved it. Cool. <clears throat> uh, one, one final update for me. If you are in a class that um, is requesting you watch a digital film from Swank, we finally have that subscription up. I'm so sorry that it's taken this long to get it, but I'm looking at our um, films right now. They're finally available. So Go check it out. It's free to use if, as long as you're a student. Unfortunately, it's one of the problems when your when your budget has to be voted in committee. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah. So um, just as a little update, that's there now. <laughs> okay. Do we want to look at stuff that's about to happen on campus? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm reading off of the page. I used to read off the monitor, and then I thought. Let's try reading off a page. Uh, Red River Reading Series. Can you the paper real quick? Just what? to make it official. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. This just in. I've just been handed this announcement. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Red River Reading Series, uh, which features poetry, short fiction, and creative nonfiction by students and faculty, will present uh, John Schultz and Rita Beeman. Uh, on Tuesday, November 15th, in the Cairo Room of the Student Center. Uh, that evening, there's a jazz band concert in Aiken Auditorium. On November 17th, there's the Undergraduate Research, research and Creativity. Create, wow, let's try that again. Uh, I'll just <laughs> edit this out. I'm not going to edit it. Uh, there's the Undergraduate Research and Creative Activity Forum on the 17th. Uh, and also on the 17th, uh, our theater department is starting their run of Peter and the Starcatcher. Sorry about that one. Um, on the 18th, the senior exhibitions will open in the Juanita Harvey Art Gallery. And that evening, there's a saxophone studio recital in Aiken. The Fantasy of Lights uh, 5K run is on the 19th. And then the opening ceremony for the Fantasy of Lights is on the 21st. Uh, the art department is hosting a graphic design exhibition at Psych Center Mall starting on the 25th of November. And that's actually going to run like through February. So that'll be there for a while. Uh, music department will have a holiday extravaganza on December 1st in Aiken. Uh, Mass Comm department is doing screenings of their senior documentaries. Uh, December 9th in the Fane Fine Arts Center, and the Juanita Harvey Art Gallery will host a reception for their senior exhibition that evening. Uh, and our fall commencement will be December 10th. Uh, if you'd like to have more information about these activities or anything else happening uh, on campus or in the surrounding community, uh, you can check out the events section of the MSU Texas homepage. Uh, and for community events, just go to the calendar uh, at discoverwichitafalls.com slash events. Right. Also, <laughs> I'll throw this in there too. Uh, if you have events or things going on that you'd like us to mention, just drop us a line. I guess I could mention 
mention the the ones that are coming up with our local theaters for this weekend and oncoming. Sure. So this weekend at Wichita Theater, they have Clue the Musical. It wraps up this weekend. Um, they have Aristocats. That is a kids show that's going to be Saturday, November 12th. Um, that's going to be an adorable show. And the kids shows are usually pretty cheap. I think like five, ten dollars. I don't remember exactly. Um, they have a Christmas story coming up starting next weekend. Um, a tuna Christmas is going to be at stage two. Um, starting November 25th. Um, Backdoor Theater is also putting on Best Christmas Pageant Ever, and that opens next weekend, November 18th, and runs through December 10th. They also have a Pay What You Can performance that may very much interest some of your students. Um, it's a first come, first serve. That's going to be on 1127, and uh, you have to order online to reserve your seat. So if you really want to see that show and you're very strapped on cash, definitely check them out uh, for that Pay What You Can performance on 1127. Cool. Very cool. All right. Sounds good to hear. Welcome. We we very much appreciate you uh, coming in and joining us and, and talking with us. I know that we ramble sometimes, especially me, <laughs> but right. we'd love to have you on anytime in the future. Whenever anything's going on, just uh, shoot us a line and let us know. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for inviting me. I very much enjoyed this. Good. All right. Well, from all of us here at Moffat Library, uh, thank you very much for listening, and we will catch you on the next one. Yay. Oh.